Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a quick look at the FCI FC72 fire alarm control panel that uh, many of you know I removed from that bank demolition I keep talking about. And as you can see off to the uh, left side of the panel, I put together a, a small little display board with a uh, horn and pull station on it, both of which were also removed from the same bank demolition with this system. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the panel. Looking first at the main display window, I guess you could say, on the FC-72, you can see that we have AC power and no troubles in the system. And you can also see a little bit lower down on the uh, panel there, there's a sticker uh, from Fox Valley Fire and Safety. They used to service this panel when it was uh, installed. So this panel was manufactured and installed in 1994. It was installed in a bank building just a little bit south of where I live on a relatively small system with uh, five pull stations and uh, five horns, two of which had strobes installed on them, so three horns and two horn strobes. And uh, it was a two-story building. This is a four-zone panel, although it is installed in the larger 12-zone cabinet. So let's pop it open and take a look at the inside. So with the panel door open, you can see that there's uh, some pretty extensive circuitry in here for a small four-zone panel. Um, this is based on a modular architecture, so you can see we have a two-zone expansion board down here with uh, two zone cards, and then mounted on the main board of the panel, the uh, BMFC-6 board, we have two additional uh, zone cards here, which the first card here, zone one, you can see some of the wiring running down uh, from the little display setup I have. Uh, up here we have the signaling circuit card, some auxiliary relays for alarm and trouble. Right here we have I guess what you could call the uh, main control board area even though most of the controls and indicators are pretty spread out all over this whole panel. For example uh, to silence the alarms you have to use the individual switches on the sides of the zones that were activated. We have the city box cut off over here. Um, then everything else, I guess, is on that board, at least for this panel's current configuration. Uh, we have the piezo up here. Again, what you could call the main display, even though there's really only two uh, LEDs here. Even though there's a battery, low battery or battery missing LED hidden uh, back there up on the upper left-hand corner of the board. And then, of course, up here we have all the uh, power supply equipment. Um, and then you can see over here on the left side of the frame we have the wiring diagram which is actually customized for the amount of zones that are in this panel which I think was uh, kind of an interesting move um, <clears throat> rather than just having a uh, you know a standardized diagram for uh, you know just the main components of the board they actually did put the exact uh, zone cards and expansion cards that are installed in this panel over here you can see some of those switches I was talking about a little bit better. Uh, the switches on the side of the zone cards here, like I mentioned, they, uh, they silence the uh, zones, if, or they silence the alarms if the alarms originated from the zone. They're also used to bypass the zones, so if you turn the switch off, you'll get a bypass uh, trouble and you'll see the trouble indicator illuminate on the individual card. I'll slide that back. You also see we have the city disconnect switch over here which will also cause a trouble. Up here on that main control board I was talking about, we have uh, some, I guess, troubleshooting and diagnostics LEDs. They'll light up if there's a ground fault or if there's a short circuit fault on uh, any of the zone cards or signaling circuits, which should help to kind of let you know uh, what the actual individual troubles that are being indicated on those circuits are, which I think is kind of a cool feature. Uh, as you can see, we have the uh, normal silent switch for the internal panel PSO. If you put it to silence when there's no troubles in the system, it'll actually cause a trouble. So you can put that back. Uh, this battery bell test switch, this will actually test the notification appliances off of battery power, so you can make sure that there's good batteries in the system. So you can go ahead and do that real quick. Then we have a standard lamp test button right here. Even though you can't see much, it's illuminating the uh, LEDs on the zone card down below as well as the, uh, the piezo. And then we have the reset switch. 
which also illuminates all the LEDs. Moving over to the little miniature display board now, as you saw earlier, there's two devices. Down below the pull station, this is a FCI MS2 pull station. Uh, and like I said earlier, it came from the bank. I forget where exactly in the building this one came from, but I think that this might have been the pull station that was right next to the panel uh, when it was installed. Uh, it was right above a staircase. Anyways, and then up above, this is a uh, Federal Signal 4050D Series D1. So this has a Faraday horn mechanism behind it, so it sounds a little bit different from your standard uh, 4050D, as you might have heard when I did that battery bell test. And then it has a Federal Signal V1971 strobe installed on the front, which is exceptionally bright, uh, I'll add. And uh, this uh, alarm was mounted directly above the main entrance of the, uh, the bank, so right above the... Um, the big glass doors and windows that you would walk through is mounted slightly off to the left side of all that equipment. So now we're going to go ahead and test this out and we'll get to see this panel in operation. So I'm going to start things off by activating the MS2. So now the alarm is silenced and that does create a trouble condition on the panel, so I'm going to go ahead and silence that as well. So now we have both the trouble and alarm indicators uh, lit for zone 1. In addition to a system trouble indication up on the main display window. So now I'm going to go ahead and reset the pull station. So now I'm going to go ahead and reset the panel. So the first step is to just simply hit the reset switch, then return the silence bypass switch on the zone back to normal, and then finally reset the trouble normal silence switch back to normal. And now the panel is completely reset. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick overview and test of the FC-72. Uh, I'll see if I can have some more uh, tests or demonstrations of this panel uh, coming along in the near future. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.